Decision for Life. Welcome to First Baptist Church Indian Trail. All of our special platform people today. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me, please, to Matthew chapter number five. Matthew chapter number five. And today we're going to be looking at the very first of the Beatitudes. Now, if the Beatitudes were written today, this would be what they would kind of sound like. Blessed are the wealthy, for they shall have it all. Blessed are the beautiful, for they will be admired. Blessed are the popular, for they will be loved. Blessed are the famous, for they will have all of the followers on social media. Beatitudes, there are eight of them, eight blessings that the Lord gives at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. The first uh, verses of five, six, and seven chapter. And uh, powerful, powerful blessings that God has in store for us. God wants you to be happy. Do you know that? God wants you to be happy. I want you to be happy. I want you to be happy on your job. I want you to be happy in your family. Uh, I want you to be uh, happy in your school and in your marriage. God wants you to be happy, and I do too. Uh, every day, you may not know this, this is one of those times you find out a little something about your pastor you didn't know. Uh, I have a sneezing fit every day of my life. I'll sneeze about uh, six to ten times, bang, 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 just like that. And I had one coming up the road yesterday, and Kathy said, God bless you. We, we kind of throw that term out periodically in our life for people. It's an expression that we use frequently in a lot of different settings. Uh, here's the setting that God is saying, I, I want to bless your life, but there are eight conditions that are necessary for me to bless your life. Look with me, if you will, at verse number three of the book of Matthew chapter five. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, <clears throat> understand something. When you see this verse, Jay, he's not talking about blessed are the people that are in poverty. Uh, he's not saying blessed are the people that don't have uh, much of this world's goods. He's not talking about necessarily uh, physical uh, possessions or monetary possessions here at all. Uh, I threatened to list uh, several versions on the screen for you today of different uh, translations of this verse. Uh, here's the best one that I found. You know, I preach out of the King James, but I read an awful lot of other versions. Now, here's the one that I liked in particular. You are blessed when you are at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. Now, if Dr. Ron Lynch were preaching today, this would be a message uh, on the Christ life. It would be a message on life out of death. It's not about you, it's about Jesus in you. Uh, so we're looking at really just coming to the end of ourself and acknowledging uh, there's nothing about us that's ever gonna walk in victory, but it is all about him in us that produces the victory. He is our victory. Uh, he is our strength. Now, the Bible tells us, here's a good paraphrase. You know, one of the best commentaries on the Bible is the Bible itself. And here is David giving us a wonderful description ahead of time on Matthew chapter five, verse three. He says in, in chapter 146 and verse five, the Lord God blesses everyone who trusts him and depends on him. So we're gonna be talking about a life today that relies on God rather than on self. And I wonder as I look across uh, the congregation here this morning and I wonder for those of you that are watching by live stream, 
How many of you are trying to live the Christian life in your own strength, in your own power, in your own wisdom? And God says, I'm not going to bless that kind of life. If you are seeking to be self-sufficient, I'm not going to bless you. But when you come to the end of yourself and you realize that you're not going to make it apart from me, God says, then I will seek to bless your life. Uh, I want to give you this morning five ways in which I rely upon God. And I hope that maybe you'll take just a few minutes to maybe write some of this down and hopefully it will uh, help you along the way. First of all, uh, I rely on his savvy, S-A-V-V-Y. Uh, I rely on his wisdom, but I rely on his savvy. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12 says this, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads to death. You ought to, you ought to highlight that word seems. Uh, it is a very powerful word. There is a way that seems to all of us. How many of you have ever made some decisions in your life that when you made that decision, it really felt right, but it ended in disaster? Can I see a show of hands? I, I raised both of mine. If I had 40, I'd raise 40 hands. We, we just, it's just something in our gut that feels like this is the right thing. And there's this job situation that comes along to you. And man, does it feel good? Does it feel right? It fits who you are. And, and there's this deep settled thing in your gut that says, I'm going to do this. This just seems, maybe it's a relationship uh, that you come across of a, a young man or a young lady and man, oh man, does that just seem like the right thing for you and, and you just go a whole hog into that thing and, and boy, does it ever lead to a dead end? Maybe that's, there's an investment that somebody has offered you and it's a surefire wonderful thing you it's a it's a it's a you're gonna hit the man there's no way you're gonna not get this right and and it just it, man I've been waiting on this opportunity all um, and boy do you lose your shirt it just seems right you you <laughs> what you think that you are full of the Holy Ghost it's just full of that pizza that you had for supper the Bible says in Proverbs 3 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can't stress to you enough how important it is that we rely on the wisdom of God, that we rely on his savvy. You say, well, how do I get that savvy? Well, there's two ways. You got to pray and you got to read the word of God. Um, I, one of the probably worn out verses that I just really do uh, probably quote several times a week. And it is, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. In other words, pray about it. If you need some wisdom in making a decision, God says to pray and I will hear you, I'm gonna answer you, I'm not gonna withhold the savvy, I'm not gonna withhold uh, the information that you're gonna need, and I'm going to give it more of it than you will ever need. I'll pour it out on you lavishly. So one of the ways to get the wisdom of God is just to simply ask him and then to get into his word. Listen, God wants you to be happy, he doesn't want you to be dumb. He, he wants you, to be blessed. He doesn't want you going around living your life hitting one dead end after another dead end. He says to every one of us in this room and all that name his name, ask me and I will help you. Now, hear my heart a minute. God's will, here's what I tell this just hit my head just now. Here's what I tell young people all of the time when God gives me the opportunity to speak into their life. God's will is not lost. 
You don't have to go scratching around like a chicken in a barnyard to discover the will of God in your life. God's will is not lost. He's your heavenly father and he wants to guide your life. He wants to direct your path and he just simply makes the plea to all of us. All you gotta do is just ask me. God's will and God's wisdom are wrapped up in God's word. And if you're not in God's word, you don't have God's wisdom and you certainly are not in the will of God. So pray, seek him, ask him, and then study the word, stay in the word. So I rely on God's savvy. Second, I rely on God's strength. In Psalm 84, verse five, the Bible says, blessed is the man whose strength is the Lord. Now, you can't get much better than that. I wonder how many of you, maybe even this week, maybe you woke up this way this morning and, and you make some kind of statement like this, I'm just wore out. You ever, you ever just come in during the day and you just flop down in your easy chair, I'm wore out. You know why you do that? Because the fact of the matter, in our humanity, our strength is limited, but in God's divinity, his strength is unlimited. When we are exhausted, the strength of God is inexhaustible. So you gotta rely on God's strength. I'll be honest with you, uh, this is a verse that blesses me over and over and many times over again and it gets me through many, many days. When you get into the darkest days of your life, when you're in a situation that you just cannot for the life of you see what is around the bend or over the hill, you can't see what is ahead. This verse will get you through. God's strength will see you through. You know, Sad to say, but as a pastor, um, I, I've, I've seen people go through a divorce and they never recover. I, I've seen people uh, try to make it in their own strength, uh, go through illnesses and they never recover. I, I watch people uh, as they get to some financial distress in their life and they go through bankruptcy and they never recover. Recover. I, I watch people, and, and, and man, this is one of those difficult seasons uh, in our culture. I watch people as they get laid off or as they get fired from their jobs, and uh, they seemingly never get through and never recover from it. Why is that? Because more often than not, they are relying on their own strength rather than on God's strength. They're trying to make it through on their own rather than in the power of the Lord. May I say to you, when you get in those dark days, when you get in those tunnels of life and you can't see uh, your hands in front of your face, much less to see where you're going, you, you, if you're not careful, you'll get stuck in the middle of all of that by relying on your own self-sufficiency rather than letting God live his life in you and through you. Psalm 71, 16. Write that down, Psalm 71, 16. I don't see you writing, but write it down somewhere. Psalm 71 and verse 16. The Bible says, I will walk in the strength of the Lord. Say that out loud. I will walk in the strength of the Lord. Say it again. I will walk in the strength of the Lord. Every morning when you wake up in the morning, your first thought before your feet ever hit the floor in your bedroom, you ought to be able to look up to the Lord and say, God, I'm gonna walk in your strength today. And when you sit down at that first cup of coffee, God, I'm gonna walk in your strength today. When you walk out that door on your way to your job or on your way to school, I'm gonna walk in your strength today. When you're going through the day and things don't just happen like you think that they ought to happen, you ought to quote that scripture. I'm gonna walk in your strength today. 
And when you get home at night, you ought to be able to put your head on the pillow and say, Lord, uh, I want to walk in your strength tomorrow when I wake up. I will walk in the strength of the Lord. Psalm 71, 16. Uh, Hudson Taylor has always been a, a major figure uh, that I've been intrigued with in my life uh, as, as a pastor and as a child of God, a great missionary to China. And uh, man, he just burned out for Jesus and he got on up in age and uh, he didn't have that strength that he once had. And he picked up a pen one day and he wrote a letter to a friend of his and here's what he said. He said, I'm so weak, I can no longer work. I am so weak, I can no longer study. I am so weak, I can no longer read my Bible. I am so weak, I cannot even pray. Here's what he said. I can only lie still in the arms of God like a little child. What a powerful word. Do you know, Sometimes we can get so worn out. Sometimes that we can get so exhausted that we can't even pray. We can't read our Bible. The only thing we can do is just lie in the strength of the Lord like a little child. Here's the deal. We ought to constantly seek to do the right things. But ladies and gentlemen, not only should we seek to do the right things, we ought to do them in the right strength. We ought to do them in the right power. All right, let me give you number three. You ready? Here's what I call rely on God's schedule. Rely on God's savvy. Rely on God's strength. And I rely on God's schedule. Psalm 31, verse 14, 15 says, I trust in you, O Lord. You are my God. And then listen to this next statement. My times are in your hands. Powerful scripture. You, you know, the older I get, by the way, I'm going to be another year older tomorrow. Mm. I was just looking at Matthew. I don't know if he's in the building right now or not, but, but, but uh, Matthew right now, is the same age that I was, 33, when I became pastor at First Baptist Indian Trail. So anyway, the older I, I don't know where I'm going with this story, I'm going somewhere with it, I promise you, but <laughs> the, the older I get, the more I understand Ecclesiastes 3. And the more experiences that God allows me to go through at this stage and, and season in my life, the more all of that makes sense in Ecclesiastes 3. There is a time for everything. God has determined that. There's a season and a different season in life for everything that we go through. Now here's what I know. The hardest season that God ever allows us to go through is the season of pause. The season of waiting. Um, now when you're in one of those seasons and there may be some of you right now uh, that you're seeking God about something and, and you're praying about it and, and it's just not working right now and you're wondering, God, are you doing anything? When you're in the season of waiting, our uh, tendency is to think that God's not up to anything. But the fact of the matter is, while you're waiting, God's still working. God's still moving. God's still doing stuff. You, you ever been in a hurry when God wasn't? God never gets in a hurry. You ever noticed that about God? Boy, we get in a hurry. We, we have fast food stores now. 
and they're not fast enough for us. We, we want to get in line and our cars get in line and if we had our way about it, we'd hold up a card and we'd go through, give our order and let them flash the card and they'd have our food waiting on us at the next window. We'd never stop, grab the food and go on. If we have to wait 30 seconds in a line nowadays at a fast food store, we're getting exhausted. We, we're just in that big of a hurry. God says that there is a right time for everything. Now, some of you in that waiting room right now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on Instagram and I, I saw a post this morning. I don't know why I looked at Instagram this morning, but I looked at Instagram this morning and there was a young lady who expressed how frustrated she was that she still doesn't have a man to marry. Now, now some of you young ladies in here, some of you young men, you're just really frustrated because you don't have that relationship in mind right now that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with. I, I had dinner uh, one night this week uh, with a couple uh, who are waiting, uh, didn't have dinner with them, but I, I spent some time with them this week and they're waiting on an adoption. They've been waiting for two years and, and, and still don't have anything. But you know, here's what's gonna happen. All of a sudden, someday that phone is gonna ring and the adoption agency is gonna say, hey, you have two weeks to get everything ready and pick them up. Now, they may be in Zimbabwe somewhere. I don't know. But all of a sudden, that waiting period has now have a tremendous sense of urgency about it. This world of ours waited 4,000 years for Genesis 3.15 to be fulfilled. But the Bible says in the fullness of time, Jesus came. God had a time. God is saying to many of you that are in that pause time in your life, would you just trust me? I've got this. Would you just rely on me? I know what I am doing. Would you just depend on me because I can see the future as well as the past? I know how all of this stuff is supposed to work. My timing is perfect. I beg you in the name of Jesus, don't you get out there and be like Abraham. God said, I'm gonna give you a son. Abraham was in a pause period. He was in a season of waiting and he waited and he waited and he waited and he got ahead of God. He had a baby with a, with a handmaiden named Hagar. Ishmael uh, came on the scene then and we've been paying for that bad decision ever since Abraham would not trust God's plan for his life. I'll say to you, you may be in that pause period Trust God's schedule. Depend on him. Rely on him. God gives the best to those who wait. Let me give you number four. You ready? Rely on God's security. Rely on God's security. Look, look this way just a minute. Do you know that as long as you live, there are always going to be people who are going to misunderstand you. There are always going to be people uh, who criticize you. There are always going to be people that gossip about you and attack you and judge you and spread rumors about you. Now when that happens, what, what's the natural response? What's the natural tendency when somebody is making an attack on your life, our natural response is what? Attack back. Our natural response is to, hey, I'm going to defend myself. Um, you do have a choice at that moment. You can choose to defend yourself or you can choose to let God be your rear guard. Let him go before you. And let him be your defense. Let him be your shield. Let him be your guard. Do you know that uh, I don't think that you're ever more like Jesus than you are when you let God defend you for yourself? L listen to this in 1 Peter chapter 2. He says, uh, when they hurled insults, 
uh, at Jesus. Uh, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats back. Instead, he entrusted himself to God to set things right. Now, let, let me just speak into your life a minute. Um, I, I even get criticized for what I'm about to do right now. and I, I get criticized for being transparent. Uh, but I blew this just recently. I, I blew this. And I can speak from experience now uh, because I just had to deal with this stuff all uh, the ministry long. Uh, but I didn't handle it right this last time. I, I was vulnerable. Uh, I was tired. Uh, I was going through some stuff uh, that had ripped my heart out. And somebody chose at that time to uh, come at me. And, and frankly, I didn't handle it well. I didn't respond well. It's one of those times that I thought that, you know, I didn't think, to be honest with you. I just jumped back. And I, I didn't act like Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, listen, listen to your pastor a minute. I blew it. I mishandled the whole deal. I handled it all wrong. Would to God that I had the opportunity to go back and do it again, I'd do it a whole lot differently. I, I, would, I would learn to keep my mouth shut rather than to retaliate. I, wanted, I, I want to be like Jesus. And the Bible says that when they crucified him, he went through that whole experience and never opened his mouth. He never retaliated. Can I say the more effective that you are in this life, the more critics that you're going to have the more you're going to have to deal with this. And, and you cannot answer every rumor. You can't deal with every piece of gossip. You can't address every misrepresentation. You say, why? I learned this a long, long time ago, probably uh, 25 years ago is when I learned this. Because once you start defending yourself, you don't have any time to do anything else. And it robs you from doing and being who God wants you to be. You just have to leave it to God. Uh, David faced this his whole life. In Psalm 62, and I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't have time to deal with it all right now. I hope you'll write it down in Psalm 62. Go home and read it and study it like I did this week. And you're going to find that in Psalm 62, there are five metaphors that he gives to us uh, on how important it is that we rely on the security of God. Here are the five metaphors. He said, God is my protector. God is my savior. God is my defender, God is my victory, and God is my shelter. All right there in Psalm 62. Now, hear, hear me, hear me. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you're poor in spirit, it means that you're not relying on yourself but you're relying on God's savvy. You're relying on God's strength. You're relying on God's schedule and you're relying on God's security. Let me give you the fifth and the last one. You're relying on God as your source. Uh, the Bible says in Philippians 4:19, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by what Christ Jesus has done for you. I don't know all of you that well, but I can tell you this. I know what your greatest source of stress is for, for the overwhelming majority of the people in this room. I can tell you what the greatest source of stress in your life is. I can tell you what the greatest source of stress on your family is. It's money. It's finances. The number one cause of divorce in America today is stress related from money. It's destroyed more marriages than you could ever imagine. You, you hear my heart, you can lose your bank account. Uh, you can lose your job. You can lose your investments. If you continue to put uh, your uh, energy into 
trying to do it yourself, you're going to lose every bit of that. But understand, you have to put your security in God's wealth and not your own. God's strength, God's power, and God's source. You understand something? My security does not depend on how much I have. My security depends on how much God has. Can I get a witness from anybody? You go home today uh, from the worship service. You go into your house. You want to drink a water. So you go over to the faucet and you turn the faucet on and nothing comes out. If you're not careful, the first thought that's going to go through your mind, oh my goodness, the world has gone dry. There's no water in the world left. And you know that that's not true. You, you know that the world still has plenty of water. Uh, the, the, the source hasn't dried up. The problem is the channel to the faucet has gotten clogged up. And so you got to figure out what channel has gotten clogged up so that you can still get back to the water. you you got you got to figure all of this out. If one channel gets blocked in your life, the faucet stops working, God can turn on another faucet just as easy. We're the channel that God uses. If one door closes in your life, God will open up another door for you in your life. And if that door closes up, he'll raise a window so that you can crawl through it. He's our source. Poor in spirit means that I realize that God is the source of my supply. And I'm going to trust him. Jobs will come and go. Stocks will go up and down. Investments uh, will be safe and then they will be lost. But the fact of the matter is, God never changes and he is the source of my supply. So let's take a little quiz real quick. How are you doing when it comes to decision making? Is God the source of your savvy, your wisdom, or are you just making up the decisions as you go along? Uh, think with me for just a minute about your strength. Are you living your life resting in the power of God? Is God living his life through you? Are you still trying to live the Christian life in your own energy and in your own intellect? The, the third area is what about the scheduling of your life? Um, do you live your life according to God's plan and according to his timetable or are you still getting anxious when things don't happen immediately like you think that they ought to happen uh, what, what about your security do you think that that job of yours is the one that is meeting your need when you get that Friday paycheck do you think that that's uh, the, the source uh, of your finances or do you acknowledge the fact uh, that God is your source? And if that job plays out, so be it. God will open up another one for me. What about your source? Is God your source? Here's uh, where we are on July the 4th in this country, I believe. Uh, I believe America is certainly not living in the strength of the Lord. When it comes to wisdom, we came to a place many years ago when we said, God, we don't need your word anymore in our schools. We don't need prayer anymore, so we don't need to ask you about anything, and we don't need to listen to you anymore, and we started going in our own direction. We started depending on our own military might rather than on the security that God enables us. We're looking now at each other. We have become institutionalized 
and we become internalized. And no longer are we looking to God as our source of strength and as our source of security and as the source for our provisions. We've told God, God, we know better than you do. But aren't you glad God still says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Those are the conditions. Then God says, I'll hear from heaven. My sins will be forgiven and our land would be healed. I believe with all of my heart, America needs to be poor in spirit. We need to get to the end of ourself. And I'm going to tell you what, we're seeing what we can do. I believe it's time we get back to seeing what God can do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I wonder... How many of you here this morning would say, you know what, Pastor? Um, I've been trying to run my life for so long and I've really made a mess out of it. I've, I've been making my own decisions, my own ways, trying to make things happen in my own time. Man, I'm a wreck. I wonder how many of you would just right now, right now where you're standing, how many of you would just turn your attention toward the Lord right now and just cry out to him? Just say to the Lord, Lord, I need you in my life. I'm tired of running things like I think they ought to go. God, would you please forgive me of all my sin? I turn away from sin this morning and with your help, I intend to live for you the rest of my life. Come into my heart. Save my soul. Be Lord of my life and live in me. Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fpcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.